Learn to be silent. Let your quiet mind listen and absorb. Pythagoras. Pythagoras counsel, learn to be silent. Let your quiet mind listen and absorb, encapsulates the virtue of introspection and the strength of passive receptivity over active engagement. In a world inundated with incessant noise and distraction, silence becomes a sanctuary for the mind, allowing it to transcend superficial chatter and tap into a deeper well of understanding. Listening, a skill often overshadowed by the urge to speak, is here revered as a source of wisdom. The quiet mind is not idle, it is actively engaged in a process of internalization and reflection, leading to profound insights that are only accessible in stillness. This statement serves as a reminder that true learning and growth often occur not in the clamor of dialogue, but in the contemplative space between words. From Pythagoras' perspective, silence is not merely an absence of sound, but a disciplined practice through which one can achieve clarity, insight, and enlightenment. Be silent or let thy words be worth more than silence. Pythagoras Pythagoras' quote, Be silent or let thy words be worth more than silence, serves as a rule for effective communication. It implies that silence holds its own value, and speaking should serve to elevate, not diminish that value. This concept treats silence as a baseline of potential, a state from which any departure must bring forth enrichment in the form of insightful or beneficial words. The lesson here is clear, exercise restraint in speech, choosing words with intention and purpose. It's a call to prioritize quality over quantity in our verbal exchanges and to recognize the impact of our words. Pythagoras reminds us that the power of our voice lies not in volume, but in the ability to say what truly matters when it's necessary. No one is free who has not obtained the empire of himself. No man is free who cannot command himself. Pythagoras this quote by Pythagoras speaks to the concept of self-mastery as the cornerstone of true freedom. The empire of himself is a metaphor for self-control and inner sovereignty. Pythagoras asserts that freedom isn't merely a lack of external constraints, but also, and importantly, the presence of internal discipline. The ability to command oneself refers to the power to regulate one's emotions, desires, and actions. It suggests that without self-discipline, we are slaves to our impulses and thus not truly free, regardless of our external circumstances. The quote encourages personal responsibility and the cultivation of willpower as the path to liberation. In essence, Pythagoras defines freedom not just as a political or social condition, but as a state of being that originates from within. Educate the children, and it won't be necessary to punish the men. Pythagoras Pythagoras' statement highlights the transformative power of education. It suggests that instilling values and knowledge in the young can prevent the misdemeanors that lead to punitive measures in adulthood. Education here is framed not merely as academic learning, but as the comprehensive development of character and ethics. By equipping children with a solid foundation of wisdom and virtue, society can reduce the likelihood of behaviors that would otherwise require correction or punishment. The quote underlines a proactive approach, shaping a just and enlightened citizenry by focusing on the roots of personal development. It is a call to invest in the formative years, implying that the benefits of such an investment are far-reaching, potentially reducing the need for legal and corrective systems to manage conduct in later life. Pythagoras thus positions education as a preventive strategy and a catalyst for societal harmony. Do not say a little in many words, but a great deal in few. Pythagoras
Pythagoras' admonition to say a great deal in few words elevates the art of brevity and substance in communication. This statement champions conciseness and the ability to express complex thoughts or substantial ideas with clarity and precision. It reflects an appreciation for economy of language, where every word carries weight and the speaker's message is distilled to its essence. This approach avoids verbosity and encourages the speaker to hone in on what is truly important, communicating effectively without overburdening the listener with superfluous language. Pythagoras recognizes the power of well-chosen words to convey profound insights, and he urges us to focus on the potency of our verbal expression. There is geometry in the humming of the strings. There is music in the spacing of the spheres. Pythagoras This quote by Pythagoras reveals his perception of the interconnectedness between mathematics, music, and the cosmos. By observing geometry in the humming of the strings, he refers to the mathematical principles that govern musical harmony and vibration. Similarly, music in the spacing of the spheres likely refers to his concept of the music of the spheres, a theory that celestial bodies and their orbital patterns produce a symphony of music inaudible to the human ear but comprehensible through mathematical relationships. Pythagoras is drawing a poetic parallel between the order and patterns found in music, geometry, and the universe at large. He sees a universal harmony governed by numbers and proportions, suggesting that the structures of reality, whether in the microcosm of music or the macrocosm of planetary motion, are bound by the same principles. This quote encapsulates the idea that there is an inherent order to the natural world that can be understood through the study of mathematics and suggests a deep unity between the physical and the abstract. In anger, we should refrain both from speech and action. Pythagoras Pythagoras' guidance on anger is rooted in self-control and the prevention of regrettable consequences. By advising restraint in both speech and action, he acknowledges that anger can impair judgment and lead to impulsive behavior that often contradicts our best interests. The suggestion to refrain from speech and action is a protective measure, allowing time for the intense emotions to subside and rational thought to regain control. This pause creates space for reflection, reducing the risk of causing harm to others or to oneself through hasty decisions made in the heat of the moment. Pythagoras' wisdom here is timeless, advocating for a mindful approach to handling our emotions, a principle that fosters personal accountability and promotes peaceable interactions. Rest satisfied with doing well and leave others to talk of you as they please. Pythagoras Pythagoras' quote encapsulates the philosophy of focusing on personal integrity and effort rather than seeking external validation or approval. By advising to rest satisfied with doing well, he underscores the importance of self-assessment and contentment with one's own actions and moral choices. The latter part of the quote, leave others to talk of you as they please highlights the uncontrollable nature of public opinion and the futility of trying to influence what others think or say about us this guidance promotes a sense of inner peace and self-reliance suggesting that true satisfaction comes from within and is not dependent on the fluctuating views of others it is a call to prioritize our own standards of excellence and to maintain equanimity in the face of external judgment the oldest, shortest words, yes and no, are those which require the most thought. Pythagoras Pythagoras points to the profound impact of our simplest choices, affirmation, yes, and negation, no, and the considerable thought these responses demand. These monosyllabic responses are the bedrock of decision-making, often setting significant life outcomes in motion. Yes can open doors to opportunity, agreement, 
and acceptance, while no can provide boundaries, refuse consent, and express dissent. Each word, despite its brevity, is packed with potential consequences and should be the result of careful deliberation. Pythagoras suggests that the ease of uttering these words belies the complexity of choice and intention behind them. Thus, he elevates these basic verbal tools to a status that demands mindfulness and responsibility. The wisdom here is in the recognition that our smallest verbal commitments can have the largest effects on our lives' trajectories. No man is free who cannot control himself. Pythagoras Pythagoras' declaration ties freedom to self-governance. He posits that true liberation isn't just a societal condition but an internal state contingent on one's ability to master impulses and desires. Without this self-regulation, an individual remains subject to internal tyrannies, passions, whims, and compulsions that can lead to personal and social discord. Freedom, then, is reframed as mastery over the self, where one's choices are informed by reason and will, not by fleeting emotions or external pressures. Pythagoras' insight asserts that the essence of freedom lies in self-possession, where an individual, through discipline and introspection, achieves autonomy over his own actions and decisions. A man is never as big as when he is on his knees to help a child. Pythagoras Pythagoras' statement celebrates humility and compassion, particularly in the context of aiding the young and vulnerable. The imagery of an adult on his knees signifies a willingness to lower oneself, both literally and metaphorically, to the level of a child. This act is seen as an enlargement of character, not diminishment. In offering help to a child, one exhibits strength not through physical stature or authority, but through kindness and guidance. The quote implies that true greatness is found not in maintaining status or superiority, but in the selfless act of nurturing the next generation. Pythagoras elevates the virtue of service above all, suggesting that in the act of supporting and educating children, one achieves a nobility that surpasses all conventional measures of bigness or success. Silence is better than unmeaning words. Pythagoras Pythagoras, quote, extols the virtue of silence over speaking words that lack purpose or substance. He suggests that when words do not contribute meaningfully to a conversation or situation, silence is a preferable alternative. This perspective values thoughtful communication and implies that speech should be employed with intention, not carelessly. The quote encourages discernment in how we use language, prioritizing quality and relevance of what is said over quantity. It reflects the idea that silence can be powerful and meaningful in itself, and that sometimes the choice not to speak can communicate more, or be more respectful, than filling the air with noise that doesn't serve a beneficial or constructive purpose. <laughs>